All right, so with the Fed's raising rates a quarter point, today we got the jobs report coming in higher than expected. With us to talk about the impact that has on mortgage interest rates, Mr. Steve Frost, welcome back to the show. Hey, man, thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's get into this a little bit. I want to, we had a, a big week in the housing market, and the, I want to really get into, what rates are what what mortgage rates are doing as a result of the Fed's decision this week and the jobs report as of this morning? So, what are you seeing in the marketplace? Um, you know, so so what we got today was, wasn't good, right? Like the and and really, you know, leading up to the Fed meeting, the Fed meeting, the press conference after that. And then even a good part of yesterday coming off of just some of like the private payroll news and, and the way the markets were responding to the Fed, we were really positive days, a lot of days in a row for interest rates. And a lot of lenders, they didn't let they didn't let their rate sheets um, reflect exactly what the market was doing. And, and there's two perspectives, right? Like maybe some of that's buying back some profit because the margins have been thin, keeping rates competitive. And there's also the part of they didn't know what was going to happen today. And they knew that that unemployment report today was going to be a really powerful uh, piece of data for the Fed on whether or not they're looking at raising rates uh, or pausing rates. And so for, from a mortgage rate perspective, as much as today was like bad news for the bond market, and it wasn't what the Fed wanted to hear. Really didn't see much movement on rate sheets that I'm looking at because the Fed or the, the lenders have kind of kept some of that the gains banked in their in their rate sheets without without really dropping the rates as low as they should be. Yeah, in fact, I mean, I'm showing on screen right now just kind of where the 30 year fixed rate mortgage is. And if anything, they came down just a little bit, which is interesting. And I think that because of that, um, well, well, not because of that, I think the important thing is to really understand this jobs report better and really what's happening. And so I'm going to share my screen and show a slide in a second. But before we do that, I think the, the important thing for people to understand is what you said and, and what the Fed is trying to do. With their rate increases, they're looking to slow down the economy. Everybody knows that. In addition to that, they're trying to slow down wage growth and unemployment. Right. And so when we have a report that comes out with more jobs being created than what the market's expected, that's bad potentially for mortgage interest rates because that's a sign of things getting better. And also, the other thing you just said is the Fed's looking at that. The Fed's looking at things like the jobs report, they're looking at things like CPI, they're looking at things like PCE to determine. Are we going to continue to raise rates? Are we going to continue to slow down the economy? Or can we pause? And in right. fact, can we make a rate decrease? So when we say, Steve, just for the audience standpoint, today wasn't good, you have to look at that from two perspectives. One, having more jobs hit the market, one would argue, well, what's wrong with that? Right? There's more opportunity for people. Right. We're talking under the context of the Fed and what they're trying to do to fight inflation, and specifically that impact on the housing market and mortgage interest rates. So when we look at this report and we start to say, okay, let's give this context like we like to do, you say, okay, 253,000 homes, or two homes, 253,000 jobs were created in April, and the market's expected 180,000. But the, the, the key thing is we have to look at the revisions over the past two months, which came down. And then when we look at the household survey, I'm sure you saw this as well, the total labor force actually dropped by 43,000. However, unemployment still went from 3.4% to 3.5%. So when we look at just the headline, you know, headline data without context, I think puts people in a little bit of panic. But I think that is the reason why mortgage rates didn't uh, implode like maybe we thought they were. Your thoughts? Exactly. I mean, if, if you think about it, if, if you take those revised job numbers and 
I mean, it's not it's not worth it to go back and and get what the expectations were. But I mean, w the jobs numbers came back if they were like slightly over, like right at expectations. Now you're talking about a seventy thousand job miss at like a two hundred and thirty thousand jobs reported job report. That's that's literally that literally means they the um, uh, the like the multipliers or like the the kind of like the handicaps that they give some of these numbers and the way they calculate these things we're off by 30%. Yeah, like we crazy. missed those jobs, like those jobs reports, that's 30, that's a 30% miss on that. So the markets are also looking at it saying like, okay, well, what's the revision going to be for April? That's right. You know? And and going back to what you had said about, and I know we're kind of, and, and I don't mean to bounce around a lot. No, it's all good. But going back to the Fed and, and talking about, is this good or is this bad? And and so we what we have to understand is that the Fed wholly believes that it, for them to stop with this tightening of policy and with them to stop restricting policy and to pull back from pushing us toward recession, they're going to have inflation at 2%. And part of that is that they are expecting the unemployment rate to be 5%, or maybe 4 and a half, 5%. Mm. And they are going to get there. And, and so it's a matter, and, and the reason that that's bad right like i'm not saying that like i want like of course we want mortgage rates to go down like that that's in our best interest so right you know but but at the same time is that the further that it's prolonged and the further that these adjustments and multipliers are put in here and manipulated like and i'm not politicizing anything but keep in mind these are government figures like this stuff is all all these numbers are manipulated the way they come out oh, no and doubt. so if if you're looking at like private payrolls and things like that or like unemployment uh filings these numbers are much more dire and and it's it's just weird because the fed is going off of some of these figures and one of the big things with the federal reserve meeting and and the reason that rates had such a great day from that press conference is some of the language that they put in here and so i wrote them down so if, if i'm looking down that's why i didn't want to mess it up but one of the lines in there that they have that's talking about what they're going to do with rates going forward you know, in their last meeting, they changed it and said the committee anticipates some additional firming may be appropriate. So at this point, they're being a little bit more bullish, right? They're saying like, we believe that based on the information we have today, we will need to be tightening policy more. And they got rid of that statement. They replaced it with, and determining the extent to which additional policy firming may be appropriate to return inflation to 2% over time the committee will take into account certain factors. And so this unemployment number is something that they will take into account. Will they take into account their revisions? Historically, no. That's right. <laughs> you know, which is, which is kind of strange, but that's, that's why these numbers matter so much for these things right now. Yeah. And, you know, the, the other things I think that are important when they talk about other factors, I, I want to clarify that for the audience, because that's what you and I are constantly looking at and so i want to make it clear that the fed looks at some certain um those factors are things like core pce inflation the cpi inflation the jobs report you know wage growth you know and so when we look at that too i think that's important to, to point out if you guys look at the screen right now is average hourly earnings you know, supposedly went from 4.4% to 4.3% year over year, but month over month, they went up a half a percent. But here's the interesting thing to me, that average weekly hours is still at three, 34 and a half hours per week, which is the lowest it's been since 2020. And so I think as, as maybe wage growth raised a little bit in, in April, People still aren't even on average working a full 40 hours a week. Right. And so when you look at that, when you look at the the lack of hours, or even if you take away 0.4 hours, but you do that for every job, and then you extrapolate that as, you know, what that hourly wage comes into and you subtract that from everything, it's a pretty big, it's a, it's a pretty impactful number uh, when you when you look at it from that perspective. It's important to note that. The Fed is the Fed's ideal number for wage growth is two and a half percent. And that factors into inflate again, going back to inflation, because that's what this whole thing is battling. And, and and 
I mean, I think now more than ever, as we talked about inflation a year ago, you know, and I'm like, chicken prices are up like two bucks a pound, right? Yeah. And that was one thing. But now just the way that we're seeing inflation is is really entrenched in every area of our life where I saw a thing on online the other day. It's like, man, the new 20, 100 is the new 20. Like every time you leave the house, you spend $100. It's crazy. You know, and it's, yeah. and it's when people, when wages are going up 4.4% a year, it doesn't hurt that bad. You know, yeah. so that's, again, that's why, that's why we're watching that so closely. Yeah. And so what, what is, what's next? What's coming out next, right? So we had the Fed meeting this week. We had the jobs report come out today. What are the next uh, factors that the Fed is looking at that will impact whether or not they pause, they do another rate increase, or potentially they do, they start to cut rates, which I just don't think will happen yet. But what are the things that they're going to be looking at that we can keep an eye out for? Yeah, good, good question. So uh, we've talked about this before. We have CPI report that comes out next week. So that's consumer price index. That's a major. So that and, and the PCE, the personal consumption expenditure, which comes out later in the month. So <clears throat> before the next Fed meeting, we're going to get another employment report and we're going to get another set of revisions and we're going to get the CPI report for May, which again, this this CPI report is the one that is going to start to factor in lower uh, rent rent rates and shelter costs, and so that's why we're really we should start to see some pressure uh, on this to bring rates down. The the, the other like, kind of odd factor in here though is is the banking crisis, right? Yeah. And so a lot of these banks, like your First Republic and your Silicon Valley Bank and things like that, a lot of these banks had a lot of their investments in the mortgage-backed security market. Yeah. And so with these banks now having these, th those things are kind of like hot potatoes, right? Like, because they're producing, they're a long-term safe debt that produces a very low rate of return where you can buy that same, you can buy that same note at a lot better return right now. So a lot of these banks are trying to dump some of those bonds for lower prices, which is, which is going to soften that mortgage-backed security market. So I, I do think there will still be a little bit of, of touch and go. But again, I, I think we're from an inflation perspective, we are going to solidly see rates start to make their move down there. There's still going to be some ups and downs, but this May 10th should really be the day that we see a better version of that, according to a lot of the people that, that we follow for that. Um, and the other thing, you know, when it comes to raising rates and pausing rates and cutting rates, you're going to see the markets are going to trade on this speculation. I mean, there is literally a whole money making market on predicting what the Fed is going to do. Right. You know, and so it, it goes back to the weird, the weird thing though, where the Fed knows that not only are they going to pause rates this year, but all the smart money people are saying that they're going to cut rates this year. And so you have to look at it like, why are we still eating pizza if we're going to go on a diet on Monday? Why wouldn't mm. we just wait, you know, continue to pause and just see how some of these continue to trickle into this, into the economy throughout the summer months. So it'll be an interesting ride, but another jobs report coming up. We have CPI next week and then we'll get some like wholesale CPI numbers too. So there'll be some, some, some better data coming out next week that is, that's hopefully positive for inflation. Yeah. And, you know, one thing you said last year, you know, when mortgage rates were going crazy and they got up to, you know, seven and three quarters or whatever we we talked about what things would bring those down and that big report is what you're talking about it's coming out on may 10th and you also said though bearing any you know uh th we have to there, there could be some things that we don't see right now and these bank these bank uh, collapses are one of those because now it would have been, I believe, a slam dunk had th these banks not been uh, collapsing the way that they are. It, I think it would have been a more clear cut that mortgage rates were just going to continue to slide down. But because of these banks recently, now that's fighting that. And there's there's people that so funny. Just just today, someone made a made a video on that talking about that very thing with people selling off of their mortgage-backed securities, which they believe will push rates right back up into the 10% range. I mean, I know. That old just, chestnut. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's just, it's, 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 you know, there's people that 
just are so convincing. And people are like, yep, this is what's going to happen. And you just don't have a crystal ball, you know? I don't know if there's a direct correlation, but it will be kind of interesting to see with putting these bank collapses in the mix, what how that affects mortgage rates. Right. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I'm I, I do think that um, you know, we're they're doing a lot. I think a lot of banks have shored up their balance sheets and have kind of they've done different stress tests and plunge tests and all these different things that they do with banking to ensure that their these banks are solid. Um, and so hopefully we'll see some of that level off. The problem is the the reason that these banks are collapsing, you have to remember it's 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 called a it's a duration issue, right? So if you're trying, if you're these banks take all of your deposit, they only keep 10% of your deposit in the bank and they deposit and then they invest 90% of it. That's right. And so 90% of this is invested in these bonds and in these mortgage backed securities. Well, the Fed has devalued these investments so quickly that when people try to get their money out of this bank, so now there's companies, businesses, and humans that are running low on cash that they've been stockpiling. Well, then they go to these banks to get their cash out. Well, now these investments, these bonds, to get out of them early, have to sell them at a 50, 60% loss. Crazy. And that's and that's because and that's because they're the duration issue, right? So like if you buy a hundred thousand dollar bond, right? It pays two percent, and you buy it for sixty thousand dollars and you hold it for however many years till it matures, you get it for a hundred thousand dollars plus whatever your rate of return is. And so if these banks could hold on to those and they have their cycle of these things maturing, then they would have the cash no problem. But it's the fact that these rates have raised so fast, it's it's really handicapping the bank. So again, you know, it's kind of like self-inflicted. And now the, the same thing and bailing yeah. them out. And what they're doing is they're saying, okay, well, we'll buy these bonds and these mortgage-backed securities from you. We'll buy them back from you at full value. We'll put them on our, our balance sheet. And then as they mature, we'll just let them fall off of our balance sheet. And then you guys can go back and buy them at four or five, like five, like a lot of them are being sold right now, like five and a half percent coupons, which is great. The, the last thing we want to do is see, you know, a bunch of people that are have accounts over the FDIC insured limit and lose all their money. I mean, that's the last thing any of us want to see. But at the same time, it's like the Fed and like Dodd-Frank, we have all these rules in place to protect mm. that. And you've got like San Francisco Fed governors on the boards of these banks and they're the ones that are losing. It's just, it's maddening. But again, that, that might've well, been a rant. I don't know. Um, well, it's interesting it's because the first thing, you know, Jerome Powell said in the Fed meeting this week was the strength of the banking sector. Why whoever is responsible for writing those, uh, uh those, that commentary, least, why, know. why would he open up with that? It was almost laughable. When what? in the same week, uh, JP Morgan took over, uh, first Republic, which is crazy. Yeah. I, I just don't understand that comment and it was almost like he knew that what was going to happen i mean obviously it wasn't a surprise you know and it's like what what was your take i guess on that comment like opening up you know everyone's waiting to see what the fed's going to do first thing out of his mouth well the banking sector in in the u.s economy is uh strong you know and that's not exactly what he said but it's essentially what he said what was your take on that after yeah. right at right right after the news, right after the news broke, it's like another bank collapses. J.P. Morgan purchased, and, and then he comes out right at, a day or two later. It was like the banking sector continues to show strength and is very sound. My exact response to that was, <laughs> "Yeah, everybody was like, <laughs> what? Why would you I come know. out with that? Why would you open that? You, you wonder like how much how much does the ego." play into that role, you know, because he's a, he's a very powerful person in, yeah. in, in that role. And there's, and he's got the governors, but even the way his tone was, he didn't give credit. He never gives credit to the board of governors, uh, but will but like decisions that are, or maybe like some of the reads that, that people don't like, it's like, we discussed these as a board or like I've made this decision. So, and that's just my opinion, you know, yeah. but I, I do think it was, it, it was definitely, uh, I, I get what he's doing. He's trying to tell the markets that these banks are okay. But you're literally talking to the guy that caused the banks to fail. 
Right. You know, by by looking at, you know, he's judging the impact that their actions are having on the economy uh, by looking behind, behind himself. He's looking at all these lagging indicators when a lot of the uh, forward indicators are right or, or th things that you see happening, especially like these yield curves and all these things are saying like, hey, what you're doing is working. Like we talked about it the other day is inflation is down from over 9% to 5%. I mean, yeah. four and a half percent or something. I mean, it's it's very, it's it's really come a long way. Like what you're doing is is working, but you're just not giving it the time, you know? And it's, again, it goes back to then, and then they're going to cut later in the year. So it's almost like part of him says, I'm going to engineer the soft landing. And I still think it's possible because the labor market's very strong, but I'm not going to stop tightening until I buckle the labor market Yeah. at the cost of all the banks in the process, at the cost of some of these smaller businesses and smaller manufacturing companies. That's right. So anyway, so. May uh, Wednesday, May 10th will be an interesting, um, it'll be interesting to see where that CPI number comes in at. And once we have that, you guys watching or listening to the show, we will let you know what that, what happened and the impact it's having on the U.S. housing market. So Steve, we appreciate you very much. All right, thanks, man.